Okay, hi, Rhea. Welcome to the CTS Train Right Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm so excited to chat with you. Um, so I think I randomly, like, I remember when I first met you, I think I, like, had heard of you before because, like, this, like, whole crazy thing of, like, obstacle course racing and then, <laughs> and then this, like, crazy, like, fast obstacle course racer. And then she was, like, crushing all of, like, the course records on Strava. And then she, like, then this infamous Rhea moved to Boulder. And I think the first time I met you was like going on a trail on like Bear Peak or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I was actually trying to go for that loop course record and you had it. And I also knew of you. And then I saw you coming down and you like recognized me and I recognized you and we started chatting and I was like, oh shoot, but I'm like really trying to break like her record now. But I like didn't want to say it. So it was just like really rushed chat because I was like trying to go for it. Um, I'm not sure if I got it or not, but I thought that was pretty funny. I think you did, actually. I think you did. Um, But yeah, no, that was just, that's so funny. I mean, it just like, in a nutshell, it's like kind of what I love about like running in Boulder and also just like this, this super strong running community, not to mention like the female running community there. It's like, we're all friends, but it's just like, you're all like gunning for it. It's just like, you know, like I opened up my email and I was just like, "Uh uh-oh, Raya stole your course record. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I actually haven't gotten a course record probably in a year now so I like chill down maybe I got a coach and got smart um so <laughs> now it's someone else's turn Bailey now yeah. is the one on a mission I feel like yeah. I get a lot well, of uh-ohs from um Bailey yeah oh I know Bailey she's super fast yeah I feel like that yeah that's always mm-hmm. what happens but I mean yeah I don't know. I mean, but I guess like, yeah. So tell me, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, tell me how, I mean, I, I've been on like a, I mean, since that first time that we actually, you know, physically, physically met, um, we've been on some different podcasts together. Um, we actually ran a race together, broken arrow sky race a couple of years back in 2018. Um, but I mean, I know a little bit about your story, but I think it's also like really interesting. I mean, we share like a little commonality and like coming from science and then discovering like running, but your track went a little bit different. And I was wondering if you could start by kind of telling us about that. Yeah, um, I actually grew up as a gymnast. So growing up, I never really ran further than like, I think 25 yards, which is the length of the vault <laughs> run out. Um, so I think like we ran for like five minutes for a warm up and that was it. I always did pretty well, at, like the cross country meets in kindergarten, but it was more one of those things I had to do, not really that I wanted to do. Um, mm-hmm. And really gymnastics was my life growing up. I was on the national team for quite a few years. Um, I did the whole thing for like 11 years. So like most of my childhood um Mm -hmm. and I I quit when I was 17 and it wasn't entirely um on my own volition it was I sort of had this like mental block where I was a little bit overtrained maybe I crashed a few too many times and so it was sort of like my career ended overnight quite literally where I went from Mm -hmm. training for like four five hours a day every day to not knowing how to do a handstand so um it was a very, very abrupt end of the career, um, mm-hmm. but I feel like I'm really grateful for everything that gymnastics taught me and also to all the lessons I've learned in the years since where I basically lost everything I knew overnight and I had to sort of redefine myself and who I am. Um, and so and when... How old were yeah. you when that happened? Um, I was 17. So, okay. so I mean, that's still a pretty, like, that's still a pretty young like a young person he has to like figure out like you're basically destined on this track of like okay like I'm gonna be I mean were you like on the Olympic track for gymnastics yeah um it actually all happened like a week before Olympic trials for Beijing um and it was one of those things that if I'd like if everything happened like a week later my life would probably have been very different um but those are the things you can't really control and so that was actually kind of like it's usually sort of towards the end of gymnastics career really because um it tends to be like a little bit on the younger side um and so everybody knew me as gymnast I knew myself as gymnast I had no friends outside of gymnastics and I had zero interest of life without gymnastics so it was like a pretty difficult few years but um yeah and and what like what was it that like made you so it was a fall I'm assuming it was like it was like a the, it was like 
yeah, it was a series of falls, basically. Um, about a year prior, um, there was like a kids club that was playing around in the gym and there was uh, one kid on the landing side of vault and I crashed. And so when that happened, I feel like something in my brain flipped <laughs> and I kept like yeah. seeing kids on landing sites when they weren't. And so I kept crashing and um, I was too stubborn to basically quit. And I feel like it was almost, it was almost my brain protecting my body because I wouldn't um so it's yeah. like really weird because I went from being able to do like double pike with like two turns to not knowing how to put my hands down and do a handstand so um it's I like mean, crazy I, what your brain can do it's so crazy because I mean I have a I have a master's degree in neuroscience and I think about that stuff and and it, it's clearly PTSD but I think people think about PTSD when they're like oh you hear like a loud noise and you go into this like you know fight or flight response but it's actually not that simple I mean I experienced something similar um where basically like my body was like subconsciously I was like protecting myself and I think it's like yeah it, it's crazy what your body can do to like to protect you from like an experience that it's like some something that it's experienced before right yeah um definitely and then like at some point my when it became so hard that I spend more time crying in the gym than actually doing things um my yeah. coach suggested there's a better life outside the gym and I should probably <laughs> go try some of that um so like when all of it came crashing down like that week before um the trials for the olympics it was kind of like a it like it went from like being in the gym every day four hours every day to not going in the gym at all anymore so it wasn't like wow. a slow fade it was a very abrupt ending um so I suddenly had all this time on my hands <laughs> that I had no yeah. idea how to do it so I filled it with eating lots of ice cream and chocolate um <laughs> gained probably I think 40 pounds in like two weeks it was like something ridiculous um wow. I tried pole vaulting in between ended up breaking poles instead of jumping in the air um <laughs> so it like I kind of needed like a mental break and like just letting myself go um and I hit like quite a low point to really then rebuild myself um so I think I was like looking for an escape and a way out and so that's like when I decided I kind of wanted to go to United States for college um and like yeah kind of start over where nobody knew that I was a gymnast because I didn't quite look like a gymnast at that point um, <laughs> so I started yeah. running because I couldn't walk like up a flight of stairs without getting winded so I was like I need to do something about that and I remember my first runs were like 30 minutes and I couldn't feel my calves anymore because everything was cramping um oh, no. but I kind of kind of had no agenda really and just just ran and ran when I felt like and yeah. my runs got longer and faster and I got like less chubby <laughs> um, <laughs> to the point where I like started gaining fitness back and like movements became fun again because it really wasn't for a few years like in between yeah yeah and so then like where so obviously I mean the competitiveness of you know like being being a young athlete and and being that driven so young for so many years and then kind of rediscovering sport again was it like you you obviously could enjoy it for for like you know once it got more normal but when did it kind of transition into you wanted to do it more like for competitions um I think it took about two years of like running before I actually did a race again. Um, and so mm -hmm. my first trail race, I had no idea that I was fast because I've never ran with people. I was always just doing things myself. Um, and yeah. I think I came like in second for a trail marathon. Um, uh -huh. I went, I went straight to the trail marathon. Um, <laughs> didn't quite start slow there. And so that's when like, I realized that I was really missing competition. Um, and just also like yeah. being good at it made me want to do it more. So it was like, right. oh, I did a marathon. Can I do a 50K? And then I tried for a 50 miler. And then I had the goal of like a 100 miler, but then the Spartan race came in. So um, that <laughs> hasn't happened yet. That's still on the to do list, but we'll see if I ever yeah. get there. Well, I mean, we'll come back to that too, because um, yeah, I think it's so funny. It's like, I mean, I love that about running is that it's like the more you do it, the more you practice it, the more progress you see. And I think like for someone, you know, because you, you went to you. So I mean, back up a little bit. You went to school um, in the United States. Where did you go? Um, I went to Berkeley for my undergrad and then Stanford for graduate school. So exactly. stayed in the Bay Area for a few years. Quite, quite impressive. And what were your degrees in? 
uh, my undergrad degrees are in physics and astrophysics and my master's degree is in material science and engineering. Um, I was working on applied physics PhD, but never got there because I got distracted by um, <laughs> obstacle course racing in mountains. <laughs> So basically, I think, like, literally, I think physics and material science is, is like, the coolest thing in the world. Like, I majored in chemistry, and I always thought the physicists were, like, super nerds, but, like, also, like, I was just secretly just, like, in awe of, like, their brain power. So I think it's, like, the coolest thing in the world. And, in fact, I, I was the same way. I was in a PhD program for neuroscience, and I'm just like, hmm this running thing seems a little bit interesting right now I'm gonna like take this to see where it goes um yeah <laughs> uh, that's how my career started <laughs> exactly. it's so cool like to take kind of like taking a chance on on a passion and you know like it's kind of like the it's not really you don't really know um if it's gonna be successful or not you're taking a big chance right yeah definitely it was and super scary I remember yeah. driving from California to Boulder and coming here in a blizzard in December. It was one degree Fahrenheit. I've never ran in anything that cold. And I was like, what did I just do? <laughs> <laughs> um, but then the sun came out and then I've kind of realized that that was the right choice. Yeah. And then I always see you like running around and like, even if, even if it is cold, you have like, you know, gloves on, but still shorts. It's awesome. <laughs> I've actually started wearing pants. I realize it's kind of nice when you feel quads when you're trying to run up a hill. So ah, <laughs> things are <okay>. changing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. But so so tell me then about, um, so obviously, you know, you running, like that's how you kind of started to get back into endurance sports. But like, when did this obstacle course racing kind of get on your radar? And I guess, tell us a little bit about this, because I mean, I, I know what it is. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people do, but um tell us about it and what is it that you love so much about obstacle course racing yeah um well obstacle course racing is basically trail running with obstacles so it's like you'd go on trails it's actually a lot of off trail too like through the creeks on ski slopes um through like bushes and bushwhacking and all of that but then you like climb a rope carry buckets go over walls so it's like almost this like kind of weird mesh of gymnastics and trail running which yeah. are the two things that you know were kind of sort of my sports um and so it, I first did it in 2013 but it was just like a fundraise that I found on Groupon that I did with like a bunch of my friends and I remember it was like four of us and I wanted to run as a team but they were like well like that they'll just play to our weaknesses so like we don't really want to wait we should just each do our own race but then I like smoked all of their asses so that was pretty great um <laughs> but I didn't I didn't think much of it until like three years later when I came back and um, the first time I did it in like open heat, which is kind of like just run your own race. You can do whatever you want. Um, like the penalties for fail obstacles aren't enforced. Um, when I was like trying to compete, everybody was really confused why I was trying to like go fast through the obstacles. Um, so it wasn't until 2016 that I did it in elite heat, which is like time and competitive. And um, you have to follow the rules. If you fail an obstacle, you have to do 30 burpees. And I accidentally signed up for a race that was part of the U.S. National Series. So it was like pretty high profile and everybody who was the best at it was there. Um, and mm -hmm. I finished, I think I finished fourth or fifth. Um, I was top 10 and I got this like little coin that said you qualified for world championship. Um, <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. And I was like, well, I guess I should probably see where that leads. And so... Um, from then on, really, like, it kind of my career kind of picked off and I did pretty well at that world championship. I, like, cried for half of the race because, like, they made us swim in this alpine leg that I totally wasn't prepared for. I was wearing, like, a cotton tank top that wasn't made to go in, like, a 40-degree lake and then run for another hour. But it was, like, <laughs> sort of miserable, but it also kind of made me, like, realize I missed pushing my limits and I missed, like... I missed yeah. that feeling where you don't think you'll reach the finish line and then you do. And so I think that's still what draws me to these races is that even though you know what to train for and like you can do pull-ups all day long, you might come to a race and it's like it's like 30 degrees with wind chill below freezing and it's pouring rain and yeah, you could do monkey bars on a nice and sunny day, but can you do that? Can you do them when you're like half hypothermic? Um, <laughs> so it's like, it's just like the unpredictable situations, very much type two fun. Um, mm -hmm. 
that's kind of like the appeal of it which is kind of why I'm more drawn to like different adventures now as well um just yeah. looking for kind of that challenge all over again and so I, I love that because I think that that I mean that's something I love about running too is that um you know you can go out in any certain condition and that's why I'm drawn myself to like the longer races because it's kind of like problem solving and you have to kind of figure out a way where you know things don't go perfectly and you have to figure out a way to problem solve your way through them but but the reason why I love it is because I feel like it teaches me so much about myself um and I don't know. Is is that something that you feel like too when you're kind of in these situations where you're so cold and like I remember that a post that you did where you're just like ah oh, like I was like you know running and I I was so cold like I wanted to turn back and like it was but then you know you got to this viewpoint you got to the top of the peak and then you know you warmed up and like it just made like the experiment experience that much sweeter. Yeah, definitely. You don't. You never remember those like nice and sunny races. You remember the one <laughs> where you thought you wouldn't make it and you do. Or maybe you don't. Those are like yeah. pretty memorable too. Um <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's definitely it's definitely that for sure. Like a lot of learning about yourself and how you react in situations you can't plan for. Like you can be prepared for all the possible scenarios and then the one you were in, you know, it's the one usually happens. <laughs> And so, I mean, I have always just, I mean, I've loved seeing like your, you know, your kicking butt at, you know, these obstacle course races. Cause it is like, it makes sense to me. It combines your gym gymnastics with running. Um, so those different types of fitness, but like ever since you moved to Colorado, you've been getting into more to more sports that you've like, not necessarily like known or like been, been necessarily good at. And you have just like taken them in stride, like the two, the two sports that I've seen that you pick picked up and then have done races in them are <laughs> mountain biking and then skiing. Like, Oh yeah. It's insane. So like, yeah, tell me what motivated you to do that? I think, yeah, I think it's kind of the same thing as what drew me into obstacle course racing in the first place is just the I like being bad at things because when you're really bad at things, then you can improve by so much. And like my first schema race, I like we trained for the uphill, but we forgot you have to come down. And then <laughs> I've never been off of a groomer in my life before. And there were double black diamond descents through trees on cliff sides. And it was just like, Isn't I'll never forget how, how <laughs> like how incredibly over my head I was in it. But it was like, it was so much fun that I would like, I finished, I was set never again. And like two hours later, I was like, all right, so if we do this again, um, and then <laughs> like a downhill pass and like learn how to do it. So I think like yeah. I get pretty bored pretty quickly with things that I'm good at. And so I, I like finding things that I'm really not and like learning how to get better. And races are a great way to do that because they really expose your weaknesses. Um, especially when you're comparing yourself to people in Colorado <laughs> where like a turkey trot is won by people going four minute miles. So, um, Oh my gosh. Right. I know. And yeah. like, for, I think that's like a great lesson because um, I think a lot of people are intimidated to, to do a race because they don't want to be bad at it. Like they don't want to be judged by the other people. Like they don't, they don't want to do that, that stuff. And I think it's so liberating and it's so refreshing for your perspective to be like, cause you are, you're an elite runner, you're a professional athlete. And then, you know, like you hop in these, in, in a bike race or a ski race, like the race you were talking about is Audi, Audi power four, correct? Yeah, that's right. It's like 50 kilometers of, isn't it 50 kilometers? The ski race is 24 miles, really more like 26. Um, okay. Well, yeah. Almost 50. 42 K, but yeah, like it's a, it's a gnarly ski race. And like, was that your first ski race? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't probably the best one to choose, or maybe it was the best one because it really made me realize that it's like super fun. Um, and yeah. that was like, I, before then, I really thought that I loved racing because I loved the feeling of winning and I loved the feeling of, you know, um, being the best. But that race kind of taught me that I just love the feeling of trying something new too. Like I was just mm -hmm. as happy crossing that finish line as I was when I won, like, world championship so it I really realized it like there's something else that drives me and then I've kind of been searching for that and following that in like kind of doing a combination a little bit of both a little bit of things that you're good at and then a little bit of things that you really suck at <laughs> 
Oh man, that's such a refreshing perspective. And I actually wanted to ask you because, um, like, I mean, I, I, I saw this, this post on, on your Instagram about this ski race that you did in Montana. Yeah. Oh, that was great. Um, so I was driving my van over to California to go to a Spartan race that got canceled. And I was around Breckenridge where I got that memo. And I knew that there was this like really cool epic ski race up at Big Sky. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll like, I guess like Breckenridge is kind of where the road splits. So I'll just go to Montana. Um <laughs> So I drove up to Montana. I was looking at the mandatory gear li- gear list on Thursday driving up and I realized I don't have crampons. And I was like, shoot, we need crampons for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> got crampons on the way. And like I got to the ski resort on Friday and Friday was like a beautiful day. And I just like looked at those cliffs and <laughs> like, what am I doing? And then oh at the pre-race God. meeting, they were like going over the course. And I remember the guy was saying, well, this is like a really like sharp edge like ridge you're gonna climb but if you fall there's plenty of jagged rocks to catch you so you're not gonna tumble all the way to the bottom I was like okay (laughs) that's gonna be interesting um and yeah so like the race was probably one of the best races I've done um like skiing wise and everything it was like it was complete whiteout, complete blizzard. You wouldn't see anything. Like the light was completely flat. It was my first time skiing down a gular, and they said, oh "Well, God. whatever you do, don't fall, because like you're not gonna stop." And the first thing I did was I fell at the very top, <gasps> like broke a pole, put together the pole, and like finished the rest of the race. But when I was like during the race, I was thinking like, if you like fall here, like would people really find you? And <laughs> I'm not sure. So I just didn't fall. But um, it was it was really, really fun. And it really made me want to do more of those things, which is usually how, you know, those races go. Um, I learned how to use crampons. I learned that I didn't buy the right crampons for my boots because they kept falling off. Um, I learned that three layers aren't enough in a 50 miles an hour wind blown storm blizzard negative Fahrenheit at the top of the mountain kind of situation um but that's like what makes it fun because it's not these races really aren't about placing they're about finishing and it's really it's easier to race that kind of race than a race that's like about a result which is why I think Mm -hmm. I like I like those kind of crazy races so do you like to do I mean do you like to do both of those things then has that has that mentality of just like racing for finishing and just like the experience has that influenced how you know you'll tackle because you're doing a lot more like ultra running races now um like uh where you know that's like you're an elite runner um has that mentality influenced how you then a- approach a running race or an obstacle course race yeah I feel like those are two very different worlds in a way um mm. it's kind of like you have to do a little bit of both. So if you're trying to live off of sports, you have to win <laughs> races every now and then. Yeah. Um, so it's sort of a, it's sort of a really a balancing act between um, doing races that you know that you're good at that are going to give you, you know, exposure. But you, just, I still enjoy those races. They're just, they're just more of a, more of a race, and the other things are more of an adventure. If that yeah. makes any sense. Yeah, it does make sense. And so, I mean, I still want to talk about this other like adventure race that you did. Um, But I also, I just have a question because like you said at the very like beginning of this, that maybe you haven't gotten many, like as many course records like anymore. But um, I feel like how I love to train is, I mean, obviously like we, we are, we're training our butts off. Like we do workouts and stuff like this, but one of my favorite ways to train is just to adventure, just to like get out and like do long days in the mountains and like that makes you fit. Um, but like, do you, th- do you think now that you kind of have that more of an approach to training? Yeah. Um, I feel like I've definitely gotten slower <laughs> running. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I look back, like, I think when I moved here, all of my runs were, like, sub seven-minute miles. And yeah. if were, and I was, like, Ooh, I was slow today. Now I'm, like, oh, today was, like, under eight? Sheesh. Like, I was, like, so fast. So it definitely, <laughs> like, my running speed, like, my training running speed has gone down. 
it's actually been a quite a long while since I actually like did a fast running race. So I'm not sure maybe, maybe I'm still as fast, but in training, it doesn't seem like it. But if I just look at, you know, the overall athlete that I've become, I feel like I'm like the skills that I've gained and everything, I've definitely grown. So um, it's just like yeah. sort of a different focus. So like, I know last year this time I didn't know how to mountain bike. I didn't know how to really ski off piste. I didn't know how to, um, like a lot of the things that I know now how to do, I wasn't able to do back then. Um, and I definitely have a lot more endurance. I could go like for like an eight hour day and it doesn't phase me. Um, so it's just, I feel like the Colorado kind of took my sports career more in the adventure direction away from mm -hmm. like the speed. Um, and I really like that. I think I find more joy in adventure than I do in trying to go really fast up a hill. <laughs> Oh man, I completely agree. And I think, oh man, it's just, it's so inspiring because I think I think what what that does is like giving yourself permission to kind of adventure it and 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 play. You can discover so many different skills and like just like this whole nother world. Um like I picked up gravel gravel bikes and gravel racing and like it's so cool how far you can go on a on a bike and then you can just like link these adventures and just it's like a, a whole new way to explore the world of sport outside of just like sticking to certain splits and like times and things like that yeah um, exactly but I wanted to talk about this adventure race that you did <laughs> yeah <Speaking> that, of adventure. <laughs> yeah um that was really really fun so last year in September I did um eco challenge so eco challenge was around i think like in the early 2000s um and they just brought it back so i think it was on a 17 year break um and it came back to the place where it last was which was in fiji um and so when i was little i was mm -hmm. watching the like eco challenge and adventure races on tv and i was like wow like if only I could do that one day and I never thought it would happen. So I got invited on a team um, of two really experienced adventure racers that have actually been in Fiji when it was last there. And then mm -hmm. my friend Ryan Atkins, who's also a really, really good OCR racer and like an overall athlete. Um, so I was just really honored to be invited. And I don't think he even finished um, his sentence when I already agreed to be on the team, just because I knew <laughs> about it. I knew about the race already and I was thinking of applying and like, you know, creating a team, but it was just way too daunting of an experience. Um, so I was like, okay, maybe some other time. And I really didn't expect that to happen last year. Um, mm. So that actually kind of got me into mountain biking because I was like, well, there's going to be a lot of mountain biking. I need to learn um, how to do it. Um, mm. So like, I'm really grateful to have discovered another sport that I love now. But it was a, it was a 700 kilometer or more than that journey across Fiji and it was all self-propelled so we we paddled we like we were on a variety of different vessels um from like their traditional sailboats to like canoes and um just like things we made out of bamboo that <laughs> were semi-floatable um and then we did a lot of tracking it was all like there's no course um you just have like a compass and a map and checkpoints so you kind of have to find checkpoint to checkpoint um, and the, the race never stopped. So the cutoff was 12 days. Um, we finished a few days before then. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to like talk about the outcomes of, um, of the race or anything, but, um, mm -hmm. it was probably the hardest thing that I've ever done. Um, I, when we finished the race, I slept for 17 hours straight and I just moved from surface to, to surface and like, whenever I put my butt down I fell asleep even it was even even if it was sitting up um but it was just it was such an adventure it was like such an immersion in the local culture because we were going through the villages and like um it was just it was it was a great way to see a new place that I've never seen before and also push my limits to what I thought I was capable of um at yeah. some point we stayed up for like I think 60 hours <laughs> And um, I've hallucinated like crazy on that leg, but it was just, it was kind of incredible to see how much your body can do when you really have the right motivation for it. Yeah. 
And so what is it that keeps you, like, what is it that, that keeps you motivated to keep going and get, to keep, like, trying these scary things or, like, these, you know, these things that seem, like, impossible? Like, I keep thinking back to, like, when you wrote that post about, um, you know, skiing down that, dropping into that couloir when it was, like, a whiteout. Like, that is, like, I'm, I would be so terrified. Like, how do you keep on, like, stepping forward into things that are, that are outside of your comfort zone? I don't really think about it much during, <laughs> I get, I guess I don't really give myself a choice to not do it. Um, so like, I remember at the Spartan world championship last year when it was so cold and we were all like pretty hyperthermic. And then we had to go swim in the lake while it was snowing outside. And I out loud, I was saying like, I don't want to go swim. I don't want to go swim. And my legs just wouldn't stop. <laughs> I just kind of went in the water. Mm-hmm. So I feel like, I, like, I don't know, part of my brain just doesn't, doesn't really have a stop <laughs> button um yeah. but I also I also just love pushing my limits and I like I I want to see where those lie um because I've I've never done anything that I was like wow this was so hard I couldn't have gone a step further um and I really want to find that I want to see just how far I can go um if I really want to so it's kind of that's probably my main driving force behind all of the adventures that I do Hmm. it's fine is finding a stopping point finding the point where it's too far <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly oh man so then what what are the types of things that you're looking to for the future like I know that might be a, like a you know a bit of a a, <laughs> a hard question at the moment but like in general <laughs> like what do you think uh where do you think the future lies like what types of races like excite you yeah, um, that adventure race was definitely a blast, something that was like multi-sport, uh, multi-discipline race. And I've actually done one this year before everything got put on hold where it was like a road bike and then a run and then a ski and a snowshoe up a mountain and back down. So really the multi-sport races are currently um, really exciting for me. Um, I was really looking forward to doing some of the sky races in Europe this year, but I'm not sure if if that will happen. Um but also like this like quarantine and coronavirus and everything where all the races got canceled um i've honestly also just be happy to just train for the whole year if we don't race um i don't like i don't really train for a specific event i train because Mm -hmm. it makes me happy and it doesn't really feel like training it feels more just like adventuring outside um Mm -hmm. so at the moment i don't really have an agenda i'm just gonna try Mm -hmm. and be the best athlete I can be and see the most I can see right now with the limited um you know availability of places that are accessible at the moment um Mm -hmm. but I like at one point I was thinking like man if I could just like train and like never race I would also just be happy um yeah so I've learned that like life has like been throwing me curveballs at like unexpected in unexpected mm-hmm. ways that ended up being like really, really good. And like they my life were much better than maybe what my plan route was. And so mm-hmm. I just kind of decided to stop planning. <laughs> so just kind of really taking life a day at a time. And I'm really privileged mm-hmm. and lucky to be able to do that. Um, and mm-hmm. I'm going to see if I can keep doing that for as long as I can. And then once, once it's over, I'll figure something else out. <laughs> I love that. And actually, I think that that's what these races, they can teach you. It's, it's, it's this kind of this deep ability to rely on oneself and this deep ability to be like, okay, like, and even if something unexpected happens that I could not have possibly planned for, I know that, you know, I can get myself out of it and I can, I can do these things. And yeah, I think that that's like, that's the biggest thing that like go doing something outside of your comfort zone that, that, that you can achieve. Um, you know, yeah, you're doing that. Definitely. Oh. I feel like in a way like this coronavirus right now, it's almost like an adventure race where you don't really have a map and you don't really have a set course. And it feels like the finish line is about forever away. Um, So like just one step at a time, one day at a time. And having those experiences definitely makes it more OK in situations like that when you really don't have control, where you just kind of have to, you know, respond to whatever each day gives you. Um, So I feel like sports can teach you a lot about life and you can use a lot of that in like everyday life. Oh, I, I completely believe the same. And 
I mean, speaking of like multi-sport things, have you heard of this race? Uh, it's like, I'm not going to pronounce it right. Um, <laughs> Utlu or something like this. It's a swim run race. Yes, in, uh, um, up in Sweden. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was actually on my radar for this year. Uh, but then I realized I really don't like swimming. <laughs> so well, yeah, I mean, I was gonna say you want to partner up for. Is it a partner race or just a regular race? Yeah, but most people <laughs> need to do both the swim and the run. <laughs> so yeah, um, we can learn how to swim together, and then yeah, we could do that race. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I was looking at that. It's like a swim run across the islands. When I think you like run across the island and then you swim to another island and then run and swim. Um, yeah. So I'm aware of all the adventures. Yeah. <laughs> I just wish there were enough weekends to do them all, but <laughs> we have time. Yeah. Oh man. Well, I mean, I think I think that you're just such a like you're just such a joy to talk to. Right? We can learn <laughs> I feel like we can just learn so much from you just like your approach to racing and like um yeah, like I just think it's just it's impressive of like what you can learn about yourself by like pushing yourself head first into tough situations and yeah, I just think that like what you do from on a daily basis from training and like what you represent on like, you know, doing races that, you know, you know that you're not you're not like very good at it, even being an elite athlete. Like I think that that's something that we can all we can all learn from. Yeah, I guess when you're in Colorado, you always have the excuse, well, everybody else in the race was a pro. So, <laughs> you know, like it's like when I feel like I feel like it feels okay to be beat by people who are better than you. Um, And it's sort of inspiring to, you know, be eight hours behind. Like my time was like, I think at the ski race, six hours. And the one in Montana and the winning was like four hours. Um, And it's like, it's amazing because you're like, where did, where did they gain all that time? And so then searching for those opportunities to get faster, no matter what you do is like, it's fun. It's like motivating. Yeah. Right. Well, so I guess to end, um, what is your advice to someone who, you know, is either like stuck in a rut or like they're, you know, they're, they're scared to try something new. Like what would you say to them to kind of get them to, to try something outside of their comfort zone? Um, I guess what I, what I tell myself is like, at the end of the day, nobody really cares about the results. Like nobody will remember if you're last. You won't remember. Well, you maybe will remember if you're last, but I think you remember it more in the lessons that you've learned, not really the place that you ended up in. Um, and I feel like no matter what you do, no matter how wrong the race goes, you can always find something that you did right. Um, and I feel like that's like that's what gives life meaning. Um, doing all these things that you thought you couldn't do and you did um, no matter where you finish yeah oh man I love that well um, it was such a pleasure talking to you today Rhea thank you so much for taking the time of course thank you for having me yeah and good luck on all your your adventures and um, I'm excited to see what you're gonna get up to <laughs> get into this year yeah um, I guess we'll see you once we're allowed to actually go places again (laughs) yeah but now's the time to dream well but thanks so much it was such a pleasure likewise have fun hillary